What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, we're gonna be talking about type annotations. Um, but first, we're going to get a like really quick and dirty introduction. Like I've learned right off the bat that you have to get right into the meat if you want people to stick around and we're gonna run like s full speed straight into TypeScript. So what are types? Types are literally just a reference to a type of value in programming, hence TypeScript. So I've got a variable right here. You probably already know what JavaScript is to a certain extent. I'm assuming if you don't, that's okay. But whenever I hover over this, and this is really value, this is a really valuable skill in general once you start working in Java, C Sharp, and this also applies to TypeScript as well too. The beauty of types in having a reference to a value is really so that you can like just do this. Like if I just want to figure out what this is, like if I want to investigate, if I want to play a little Sherlock Holmes, you know what I'm saying? If, if you want to figure, if you don't know what dog name is, you just hover over it and you look at what it is and you can see that it is, you probably could tell already, but if this were something more complex, which we'll talk about later, like a, a really complex object, you could also tell too, but that word right there, string is a type it is a reference to a value and it's simply there for convenience sake um there are two different types of types funny little alliteration there so primitive primitive is going to be the most common that you're probably going to see it's the simplest and it's just uh value types if you we and We'll get a little, we'll get a, a little nerdy here in a second. And I'll talk about why they call them value types and why they call them reference types, because that's also very important to stand un, to understand. So most common, the ones that you need to know right now, if you're coming from JavaScript, you probably already understand what these are, but let's just for a second here, concentrate on these ones, but also realize that null, undefined and any are also primitive types. We will talk about object types here in a second, but let's just kind of, for simplicity's sake, talk about primitive types first. So people call, the difference between a primitive type and an object type has to do with where they are stored on in the computer. When the, you press compile and the computer goes through and starts uh, parsing all of your code, what it's going to do is it's going to check if it's a primitive or an object type, sometimes called a value or a reference type. If it's a number, it's going to go straight on the stack. If it's an object, it's going to go in the heap. The difference between the stack and the heap, heap is made for bigger memory, object, array, enum, function, tuples. Those are all going to be stored in places that are designed for larger memory like the heap. Primitive types, value types, they're not as big, you don't need a heap, so you store them on the stack. That's the reason that they call that that. If you want a more in-depth kind of introduction on that, I've got a C-sharp course, but this for this course, we really don't need to get more into compilers. Just if you really want to research it, um, type in value reference type TypeScript, and you can get something very in-depth. So first thing, a variable type annotation. A type annotation is when you declare the actual type after the variable name. So let's just say we went back and we're gonna do this for real here in VS Code here in a second, but let's just say for one second that in TypeScript, we want to declare the type for this we want to you can get away there's type inference but for right now let's just pretend that the only way that we can get typescript to compile is if we have a type annotation we need to declare this type and this is where most people get freaked out about typescript so what do you do all you do is right after the actual variable name so here variable name just go in put a colon and then add the type. And that's all you really need to do. And knowing the difference between the primitive type and the object type can help you identify this keyword. So whenever you see 
any of these keywords, no undefined any, we'll talk about in a little bit, but if you ever see any of these keywords and you see them right after the actual name of the variable and you have a colon and then you have a string, that is a type annotation. Very simple. This is the only, this is what's doing all of this nice little type checking that we have. And this is what's giving us the ability to um, put guard, I call them guardrails and allow us to get C references to value. So let's go in here. We've got our dog name. What do we do? All we do is we just go after here and we put, let's just say we put a number. Let's put for just for shits and giggles, let's do it wrong to see what happens. So I incorrectly identified this. This is not a number. This is a string. So what is going to happen? The guardrails are going to come up. It's almost like bumper bowling. If you've ever been to a bowling alley and you had to get the the bumper bowl or they had to put the pipes in the gutters because you sucked at bowling so bad and it's embarrassing, but it makes the game more fun. That's kind of the concept of type checking. Those are those are the rails that keep the bowling ball from going in the gutter. Whenever we have type checking, it prevents us from putting um, numbers or strings in places that we don't need. So let's just look at what's going on here. The type string is not assignable to type number. And it's doing this because once again, here is a string and we need to put a string. We need to spell, I need to spell string correctly. <laughs> okay, so let's just say uh, baby, let's put, let's be goofy with our names because it makes people pay attention. Let's go baby beaver and <laughs> baby beaver number and it's going to be once again it's going to be a number so what do we we can literally put any type of number here typescript is very flexible we can put 7.0 we can do all different types of numbers if this were java if this were c sharp you would have to put a decimal here but because typescript is very lax you can put any number that you want to so here let's just say um test let's just call this test boolean then we're going to once again let's put a string let's be crazy <laughs> let's be let's be let's be dumb okay so and then right here i'm going to declare false which is a boolean once again what's going to happen the bumper bowling rails are going to come up and it's going to say hey i'm trying to protect you from your dumb ass <laughs> we need you to put what you declared in the type annotation into the actual value otherwise this thing's not going to compile and then it's going to draw this red underline underneath it so type boolean is not assignable to type string okay so let's go ahead and compile this and see if we can actually get it to compile that's the main thing if you have red squigglies a lot of the times it means that typescript's yelling at you telling you you can't do that but if it compiles that means you've satisfied all the typescript requirements we've got a very simple example here so it's probably not going to tell us too much but let's just make sure it compiles and make sure that our all of our variables so if you hit the debugger or hit the green button it compiles we've got turtle in there got a seven inside this variable also a number we've got a test we've got a test boolean it's boolean and then after that we've got our console log down at the bottom so we've compiled like i said doesn't really tell us much but just shows it compiles and that all of our types are right and we've learned a little bit about type annotations today anyway i hope that you guys enjoyed this if you did make sure to hit that like button make sure to hit that subscribe button and as always thank you for watching